Right, hello there. The day's finally arrived when I get to work on this glorious looking 1967 E-Type. The car's been in storage for the best part of the year and I've finally got to the point where I can get on to recommissioning it. So what I'll do is I'll take you around the car first of all, show you its high points, show you its weak points and um, we'll get to know it and see what needs to be done. So this is 1967 Series 1 E-Type. It was actually launched in 1961 by Sir William Lyons at the Geneva Motor Show. That huge bonnet and those curves really do make it a showstopper. But the looks and history of the E-Type are covered very well elsewhere. What I want to show is that the E-Type is much more than just a superficial showstopper. Underneath the surface there are some great pieces of engineering that I want to highlight and I'll be able to do that through this process. The XK Straight 6, for instance, is one of the world's great engines and was in use by Jaguar for over 40 years and is a real piece of automotive engineering art. I'll also be looking into more detail on the big triple carburetors you can see on the side of the engine, exploring how they work and how they compare to alternatives from Weber and Delorte. Another long-serving Jaguar innovation, first used on the E-Type, is the IRS, Independent Rear Suspension. I'll be looking into this in some more detail and showing how it makes the E-Type a great car to drive. So with that, back to the workshop. I've developed a bit of a system which basically you can judge a car on how close you can get to it before you start judging its flaws. I don't think I'm the only person to do this, but this is really a kind of, it's a three or four meter car at the moment. It looks great at this kind of distance. So you can stand back and it looks pretty shiny. Now it does need a good wash and I haven't washed it since um, I got it to be honest, but it's, it's been undercover. But as soon as you start getting closer, you start to notice flaws. So if we look in here, you can see that there's a bit of kind of surface rust and corrosion coming through in the headlamp bowls. The tires are ancient. The wheels need refurbishment. If I walk around, the paintwork has got loads of um, might, you know, small scratches on. Um, when you open the door, um, the chrome work actually starts to come off. So the door's catching, the door frame here is catching this piece of trim. And then this bit here is coming off entirely. As we carry on round, we can see that the bumper here, rear bumper, this piece of the trim missing. Again, the rear wheels need a complete refurbishment. And again, the tires are ancient. If we carry on round. The rear end isn't too bad, actually. Again, the, the bodywork in this car is in pretty good shape. If we look up on the roof, the Webasto roof that was fitted in the early 70s. I don't think these ever were fitted in the factory. Um, been in touch with the second owner actually and um, got in touch with him. He was the guy that fitted this. So um, not to everyone's taste, it has to be said. And uh, not in the best of condition. I think it doesn't fully, the sliding mechanism doesn't work um, properly at the moment. If we have a look underneath briefly, we can see that the exhaust isn't fitted to the car at all. So just there is where one of the exhaust um, hanging rubbers is. And the exhaust itself is on the shelf over there. If we carry on round, similar story on this side, the passenger door fits better than the driver's door, to be honest. But um, the bodywork is pretty good. So let's have a look under the bonnet. Get the catch out of the way. Okay, so this huge bonnet really is there for aerodynamic and cosmetic purposes only. The structure of the front of the car is on this great big frame, and that's what the engine hangs from. And there's um, a frame at the front there called the picture frame that um, uh, brings it all together. The radiator and everything is hung off the front there. Clear things to spot at the start. Um, it's got a good set of um, original triple carburetors, which is good, but that's not the original cylinder head. The block is the original one from this car, but that's probably um, a Series 1 XJ 4.2 cylinder head. So if something went wrong with the cylinder head at some point, it's been replaced. It should have the smooth cam covers um, for a car of this age. It was only uh, later in the 1960s that Jaguar started replacing the, uh, um, the smooth cast cam covers with these, uh, these ribbed ones. If we look on the bulkhead, um, I'll try and zoom in a bit so you can see. Obviously that isn't red. Now this car was originally opalescent silver grey. At some point it's been green and then it was resprayed red, I think in the early 1990s when it was given a full restoration. Signs of that um, restoration being typical 1990s. We'll look down on the sills. You might not be able to pick it up too much here, but there is 
um, stone chip which has been oversprayed. And whilst that was kind of a, a thing to do at the time, actually you can see it, um, the kind of mottled look of the reflection on the uh, inside underneath the headlamp bowl there. So that's on the sills and then on the nose cone and at the rear. So if we look under here, again, you can see that kind of mottled finish and that really isn't how you'd restore an E-Type nowadays. And it's certainly not how it would come out of the factory. That should be nice and shiny. And um, obviously they've done it to uh, be resistant to, to stone chips, but, uh, but never mind. That, that could be flatted back and repainted. If we look on the uh, uh, on here, you can see that there's a, a little bit of corrosion either side of the badge, and uh, you know it's showing its age, but you know that's that's not too bad. Look on the bonnet, there's a bit of a stone chip there. So you know it's it's a, a as I said a three or four meter car from the exterior, and um, the paintwork could be improved vastly with a good flat and polish. Uh, with the modern compounds and um, polishing machines, you can re you could really, really bring this car up. Um, you can see on the windscreen that it's obviously it's just dirty. Triple uh, windscreen wipers on an E-Type, which is a really cool feature. Um, you can see here, previous owners part of the Jaguar Drivers Club, which is a nice sticker to have in the windscreen. And the original key fob has got a Jaguar Drivers Club as well. Um, and then we'll move to the inside. So I've done no preparation really. This is the car as it was, um, as I collected it from South Wales. So at some point, someone's done the um, red piping on the seating, which is just awful. Um, that can go and actually once turned back to black and the seats um, given a good clean and um, feed, it'll uh, look so much better on the inside. There's a bit of a musty smell, obviously you can't really uh, um, get that on camera, but um, you know, it's got a bit of an old car smell, but there's also a bit of damp. Um, you can see part of the exhaust, which um, that's the broken flexible joint. Um, the reason that the, uh, the exhaust is off the car in the first place. So that's um, easily repairable, easily re well, replaceable. Um, and then we can look into the footwell. So early cars had the flat floor. This has got a, um, a dished um, floor to give better um, clearance and more comfort for the driver and the passenger. So that's on both sides. But the carpet's been removed, um, I assume, for inspection purposes. Certainly, I was looking around there when I had a look at the car, first of all. But other than the red piping, oh, and um, the not-so-nice um, red um, part on the armrest and door handle on the uh, driver and passenger doors, again, that can be uh, sorted out fairly easily. Um, the interior is pretty original, and it's pretty good. You know, the, the steering wheel... Um, is showing signs of age but it's in reasonable condition but it's certainly the original steering wheel as well and um, oh I've left the keys in the car so there we go so we can see down here to the very nice Jaguar Drivers Club key and this one's actually got a I'm not sure whether that's original or it was starting to be fitted in 1967 but um, it's got a, um, a steering column lock um, ignition uh, barrel there so um, I'll have to do some investigation to check on the originality of that. But um, I've got a friend who works at, uh, recently retired from um, Jaguar Classic, uh, who was with Jaguar for I think over 40 years. And his father worked at Jaguar uh, back in, in Coventry back in the day as well, who knows his E-types extremely well. And he's got um, uh, one of a similar vintage, a plus two. Um, and he had a look around this car and declared it to be a good one, which uh, is a really good uh, thing to see. Another thing I failed to point out on the roof here, actually, is um, if I pull the Webasto back, you can see that there are significantly deep score marks um, where the Webasto has been slid back and forwards over the years. So um, that's not ideal. It's not um, pretty. There isn't any corrosion as such, but obviously um, to have the car in really nice condition, you wouldn't want that either. Okay, so let's have a look in the boot. Little catch on the side there. It opens and stands on this chrome prop. So if we look in here, we can see um, Handley. There's a um, Thor copper and hide mallet for taking the wheel spinners off. So that's the uh, stand, pretty much standard bit of kit for that. 
is a block of wood. So that would have been used um, to jack the rear of the car. So um, because the exhaust hangs down the center in the middle of the car, and there aren't jacking points in the sills, that block of wood will be chosen specifically because it fits between the two lengths of exhaust and you can actually jack the car up safely on that rather than damaging the exhaust. So as we come back into the boot, we can see that the spare wheel's got uh, light corrosion on it. There's a spare fan belt, it would seem. Um, a couple of other pieces of wood, no doubt for jacking up the front of the car. And uh, generally looking at the fuel tank on the left here, and then into the spare wheel well. There's no corrosion, it just looks old and tired, and again, there's that kind of slightly musty smell. So as I go through this, what I'll need to do is make sure that I very carefully check and probably replace these fuel pipes. Um, only using uh, super unleaded at the moment, now that they've uh, changed from um, to a higher ethanol content in standard unleaded. So I need to watch out for that. If I look down here, I can see that there's a hole through. That there's a few holes through, so need to watch out for that. Just any way water can get in, it probably will. Right, back to the other side of the engine bay. So I've had this running. Um, it does start if you uh, get the battery charged and um, uh, get some fresh fuel in it, so that's encouraging, but uh, I wouldn't want to run it for too long, and there's certainly a small pool of oil gathering underneath it. If we look in here, um, you can see that... That is one of the ball joint gaiters that's completely come off. So, um, you know, you, you can't drive this car. The brakes are stuck on and um, it really just needs a, a good overhaul of the suspension brakes um, and a big engine service and driveline service as well. But it's all there. You know, it's, it's a really good sound basis from which to start. Um, getting it mechanically safe and running uh, well is the priority. The cosmetics, as you can see from the green bulk head then again, isn't, uh, isn't something to worry about for now, but of course to get the most value out of the car and to make it uh, um, worth what it ideally should be, you'd really want to get that all at least to match, even if it wasn't to be in its original colour. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. In the next episode, I'll be starting the hard work by taking the rear suspension off.